today. And news outlets are still reporting news stories of people being arrested for participating in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And law enforcement has had some help in the form of one of my favorite investigative bodies, America's ex-girlfriends, catfishes, and bumblebitches. That's right. Women have been turning in their exes and catfishing and screenshotting men who have bragged on dating apps and social media about their role in the January 6th riots. White women using their superpower of tattling for good? <laughs> you love to see it. But as tickled as I am about this sisters are doing it for themselves approach to counterterrorism, I have to ask, how did we end up with this many people feeling so comfortable committing an act of terrorism in broad daylight and then bragging about it? Let's find out in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? The largest organized group at the Capitol riot on January 6th was a group called the Proud Boys, which sounds like a brand of underpants for boys who have just been potty trained, but it's not. It's actually the name of a large white supremacist movement. In fact, it's one of many white supremacist groups who participated in the riots that day. These groups organized the January 6th attack openly online. And two of their leaders were these two guys, Joseph Biggs and Ethan Nordine. Biggs and Nordine have both been really lucky when it comes to not getting arrested for crimes they committed right in front of police. In 2016, Biggs beat up a protester at the Republican National Convention, but police only charged the man he beat up, not Biggs. Does that sound suspicious? It should, because the police actually ended up settling a civil case for falsifying their own documents to make them more sympathetic to Biggs. But of course they were sympathetic to Biggs. What would the police look like arresting him for beating up a protester? It's literally their favorite thing to do. Biggs' friend, Nordine, also punched a protester in Oregon. The man he punched was arrested, and Nordine wasn't. The whole thing was caught on video, and the Proud Boys successfully used that video as a recruiting tool online. These two prolific punchers brought 100 of their closest friends to D.C. on January 6th to storm the Capitol, thinking, for good reason, they could get away with it. It would be like if every time you shoplifted, you got a little kiss on the forehead. You'd think, I can't wait to shoplift some more. Many right-wing extremist groups participated that day. They planned the whole thing openly online, and they posted videos of themselves storming the Capitol. So why did they get the idea this was an acceptable thing to do? It's simple. Because the federal government stopped tracking domestic terrorism a decade ago. And that has allowed white supremacist domestic terrorist groups to flourish unchecked. Now, I know that sounds like a liberal rumor, like J-Lo and Ben getting back together, but it's actually a fact, like J-Lo and Puffy getting back together. So how did we get the there? I'm so glad you asked. In 1995, Timothy McVeigh carried out the Oklahoma City bombing, the deadliest domestic terrorist attack in U.S. history. After that, the feds cracked down on domestic terrorism, and it worked. In the 1990s, the number of domestic terrorist attacks diminished. <sighs> if only they could have done a similar crackdown on frosted tips. Two little cuties. Anyway, it stayed that way until 2009, when right-wing domestic terrorism started to go up again. Can you guess why? Honestly, if you've been watching the show, you should be able to guess why. <laughs> That's right, we elected a black president, white people lost their whole dang minds, and white supremacist groups suddenly saw an uptick in membership. In 2009, the Department of Homeland Security produced a report warning about the rise in right-wing domestic terrorism. Now, I've never understood why, whenever people are talking about white supremacists, Republicans insist on raising their hands and going, they're talking about us. Talk about telling on yourself. Sweetie, nobody said your name but you. Anyway, Fox News and Republicans made a huge stink about how an attack on domestic terrorists was actually an attack on them. And then something crazy happened. The Obama administration caved to them. They buried the report and disbanded the unit that tracked right-wing domestic terrorists. Obama, baby, I love you, but you really up. Oh, what's that? Oh, he can't hear me because he's recording a podcast with Bruce Springsteen. Hmm, good for him. Ever since then, the number of right-wing terrorist attacks has grown, peaking in 2020. 
Why 2020? Because at this point, not only was Trump fanning the flames of white nationalism on camera, he also started helping them out behind the scenes. That's right. You know it's not a story about something bad happening in America unless Trump shows up to make it worse. In 2020, Trump's campaign message was that the left was a threat to America. So he ordered the Justice Department to find some left-wing terrorists. Federal agents were shifted away from right-wing targets and pressure to uncover a left-wing extremist conspiracy that did not exist. Of course it didn't. You think the left is capable of pulling off a conspiracy? We can barely pull off an election. Trump's Department of Homeland Security denied requests for funding to search for warnings of extremism online. Pretty embarrassing choice considering a bunch of extremists tried to overthrow the government and they planned it online. They couldn't spot it, but I did, and I'm just a lady with a Twitter account and spotty spectrum Wi-Fi. And that's how we got here. Law enforcement ignored the individual threats right in front of their faces, missed the last decade of a rising trend simply because Republicans told them to, and then they literally looked the other way while criminals walked past them in broad daylight like every police cat in every cartoon about a criminal mouse. And that's how we got here, with our best tool against domestic terrorism being America's brave ex-girlfriends. Well, thank you for your service, ladies. Keep up the good work, because nobody else is doing it. This has been How Do We Get Here?